Hi, this is Mia. This is just <clears throat> a quick update. It is Tuesday morning, and my back hurts so bad. And I'm doing some work, catching up on some work. And it's one of those days where I'm like, unbelievable. <laughs> like, I'm trying to take deep breaths and stuff, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but I am going to have to stretch out because of financial issues. Uh, the distance between going to the chiropractor, um, uh, gosh, it just makes me, I don't want to really talk about it, but I'm, I'm not able to afford her. I have to pay out of pocket because of the system, how the system is working. It's not working for me, so I'm already in a lot of debt because it's going on a credit card. It was, and then eventually you realize the credit card's maxed out, and I also have a tab, I guess, with the same person, and I have to be... Uh, It's like feeling like how I feel now, knowing soon I will be going to get medical help. It it makes, like mentally, it makes it feel like, okay, just get through, like, I attend births. It's like, okay, just get through another day. Just get through another minute. Just get through another, you know. But it's like, I tried that whole, they're not going to pay, I'm not going to go. And I was in agony worse than now. And it was the process of trying to figure out a negotiation so that the cost could be covered based on 100% on the fact that I was in a car as a passenger and we ended. And I, I just don't get, get the system. Um, so anyways, it's, it's really like... There's fakers out there, they kind of mess it up, but there's really actual fakers that people put on the news and they are getting away with stuff. And it's like, it's I just see that even as myself as a practitioner, I can see other people needing the system to work for honest folks like myself. And I, don't, I just don't understand, like, is there just people just really shut their eyes to their responsibilities. Like, I just, I feel like that's maybe what it is. People are just, you know, blinded by the fact that this, there's responsibility here, that they're just letting it blow away. Um, I'm not sure what to do about that, but yeah, that's why I keep, like, pausing, because I'm like, it just, I'm sitting on even this, I'm sitting on um, still not I don't know. I'm doing. I'm doing what I can with what I have, and what I have is not <clears throat> anywhere near what the treatment plan says I'm supposed to be having. So that is, I don't know. I've never dealt with this before. That's that's the problem. So moving forward, I had seen a couple of YouTube videos of people, and it's kind of interesting just seeing the light. Oh, usually, people I should turn everything. A lot of people have the light from their window and they have their themselves being filmed you can kind of see it see at least their window not maybe not necessarily yards and stuff and i'm always like this one lady i was like oh it looks like florida or something and somewhere warm and yeah sure enough it was uh, as far as i know florida i'm like ah oh, i can imagine that heat right now i don't know if it would hurt my i don't think it would hurt my back it just ugh, it's like even touching it it's like throbbing and hot, and I'm like, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm done trying to figure it out on my own what's going on when I'm supposed to be seeing specialists to do that, and I'm like, it's kind of like burning the candle on both ends, like, hey, you know, uh, it's super hot. I mean, I'm typically a cold person. This window here, the sun is, eh, I can't tell. It might be a reflection off the neighbor's window. The sun comes in early but the houses are close together and actually weirdly they're like shaped like this or they're tilted like this so kind of even blocks I don't know 
the sun gets blocked pretty quick coming up in the morning and going down over here. This neighbor's house, you're like, shoot, if this neighbor's house wasn't here, I'd have like 30 more minutes of sunlight. And since they're so close in the angle that they're at, it just totally, I think it, if you drive out on the main road, you'd probably have at least an hour, if not two more hours of direct sunlight. But if you're here, it's it gets blocked that much sooner um, because it's got to go from here, then it goes behind the neighbor's house, and then it goes, oh, sorry, it goes down like that. Um, there's some people, that, going back to that outside, there's some people that film outside, either at their home or beside their house or like in parking lots and stuff. And then there's the people on YouTube. I'm just sharing just to kind of distract myself from the pain. Um, it's people that ride and have their camera set up in the car. I think that's kind of cool because it's kind of fun to see what they see, what the terrain is like, and the weather, and if there's mountains. Or, I haven't seen too many with oceans. That would be cool. Um, I've done some audios that way, but I have not. I don't have anything to set up. The only thing I would really use anyway is my phone, and there's no, not a lot of, there's not a lot of memory. I kind of wish I had at least 32 gigabytes, but anyways, I don't. Um, people have pets in there. I mean, a lot of people don't put like the front of their house with their address and stuff. A lot of people don't do street signs right at their house. I don't know. I don't watch that much. I just like, I like to get positive. I don't know, not feedback, but people that have really positive messages and different things. Um, you know, when I was in school, there was a lot of, you know, I was probably watching and listening to my own actual classes. Um, some of our classes were actually on YouTube um, or as um, link only. Like I said, I, I just mentioned that about my back because it's like hurting so badly. I don't, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. I mean, there's other issues going on, but this is the one that's screaming right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty cold this morning, but it, I can look outside. It looks bright. I'm not, I'm not feeling well today because of all this pain and it sucks because the quality of life has really changed based on this accident and I keep trying to be like, don't own it, don't own that injury, don't own that accident, just, it was an event and I'm, like I'm trying to think in my mind, it's going to heal one day, it's going to heal one day, like don't. Don't, I mean, it, what's really hard is knowing that if I did the things that the doctor told me, which would involve going to these specialists, I feel there would be a much greater improvement. And because the insurance company is not paying, and my personal insurance will not pay, it is not even a question that I'm not going right now. And it is causing things to be... I don't know. Yeah, I, let's just say I have empathy for people that have been through this because before I had tried to sense some sort of empathy with people, but until it happens to you, then you know. Um, for instance, changing the subject just to stop thinking about it. I see a lot of people saying, hey, you, you have this type of budget for food or you have food intolerances. Why don't you eat this? 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 And there's kind of this whole thing of, well, I have, they're like, well, I'm going on vacation because I have this much money. And, well, I'm going to stock up on toilet paper and toothpaste because I have this much money. And then they'll scold me because I'm not going on vacation, stocking on toilet paper, stocking on toothpaste and eating all these different foods that they're saying to get. Now, they'll scold me and I won't, like, so if it's, uh, Someone I don't really know. It happens in all spaces. And you just kind of stop trying to say, you're not in my shoes. You're not a single mom of kids. You're not trying to maintain 
home and food and clothing for three people. Your income, or even if you're very low income, has one person attached to it. And this just becomes... It's like their reality and my reality. It just there's no sense in button heads about it. There's no sense in trying to justify why you're not stocking up on toothpaste because it's like right now we have a tube and we're gonna go and buy the kids some bread and no, I'm not gonna eat it because I don't eat gluten. Like, and then they'll say that I'm eating a snobbish diet and it's like, um, excuse me, we don't know what happens when I eat this. Just like. If you had a kid, and this is a kid, I always use this analogy as a peanut allergy. Why would you invite them to your house once a week to come eat peanut butter cookies? And say, oh yeah, we're gonna watch cartoons and eat peanut butter cookies or eat cookies. And why would you, you know, almost try to force them to? consume it, something that's toxic for them. You know, somebody else could be allergic to sesame seeds. And it's like, just because most people aren't, you don't scold them because they're not saying, well, you should go eat sesame seeds because they're really cheap and because you can make this. And, you know, and it's like, it's just like people shut off their thinking, their listening skills. And then they not only they shut that out, they scold other people, and then they're just like, oh, what a snob. You know, but it's like, you. why would you want to be responsible for somebody else going to anaphylaxis or having severe systemic issues for a month after one exposure to the stupid thing? Or severe hives, and you're like, going out to talk or go to work, and people are like, what happened to you? Like, or just like nasty. I've had the last time I had ate at a restaurant, which was right before I got in the car accident that I can remember. And that was like, because I usually don't go. Um, it was because uh, a group of people were going and I had soup and salad and it, it caused a lot of issues. And people were like, oh my gosh, what happened to you? It was head to toe. It was inside my body, outside my body. It was disgusting stuff that I don't want to talk about. And I was like, people were like, Oh, it's not that bad. You didn't die from it. And it's like, I will never put my body through that again. You know, I'm already dealing with this and the headaches and the numbness. Like, I, I'm just like, why are you calling me a snob? Like, if you want to eat that, go for it. If I could, I would join you. I'm not saying that you're bad because you're eating this. It's just that why would you want to almost force somebody else to be in misery and that and then it like full circles like the car insurance people it's like why would you almost force somebody to sit there when you know that the medical bills should be paid and that your policy states that and then you totally disregard your policy it just is really weird to me so if you guys I don't I don't know who has what religion or belief or faith or not or lack of I always ask people to pray for me and my family, and I want to pray for you guys, and just not trying to go into too, into too many details due to the nature of, you know, publicity, um, but I, I like to check in, um, there's another channel I don't talk about because there's hardly anything on there, I don't have a lot of good film, like, I, don't know, I was going to do an outdoor one, but where I live, it's a really noisy, um, kind of different, completely different channel disclosure about health and wellness and going to your practitioner. I wanted to do kind of, before this injury and all this stuff happened, I wanted to do a lot more kind of scripted, not scripted, but more focused on certain things, like say information, educational information, informative things, say, on vitamin D deficiency or signs and symptoms of this. Like, I wanted to do kind of a really helpful thing because this channel in particular, this channel was set up as a experience of being a medical, naturopathic medical school student. 
and some of the journey. I didn't see a lot of people in my demographic in the medical school. I didn't see a lot of people with my family dynamic in the medical school. And there was a person here or a person there, like maybe I want to estimate maybe once every six years, I would see somebody that was somewhat similar and they really worked really, really hard. And yes, you can have the same classes and yes, you can have the same schedules. But then once certain people go home and study, other people, they have their kids, they have to rush to daycare, they can't be in study groups. Or if you're a person of color and your teachers are racist, that's just a really bad, bad. It's very exhausting. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. And they'll tell you to your face. And it's not any type of assumption, speculation. They will tell you to your face. And you just have to, I mean, maybe I'm too nice to just be like, well, you know, that's your, their opinion. <laughs> and it's like, I know you hate me, but hey, I love you. I don't have to like you. I don't have to be your best friend and go out for tea. Or heck, maybe we could go out for tea. And I still know that you don't like me, but it's like they will do something sometimes that are dishonest in order to get how they feel about you, the point across. Anyways, let's stop that. <laughs> but yeah, I had found in different things, nobody is my clone or my, you know, exact duplicate of my life. But it was really, um, it was really one of those things that, um, how do I say this? It was really one of those things that, I felt uplifted hearing other people say this how I did it. Because if you say for me and my parenting, having young kids while in school and all the other stuff that goes with that, people are like, why don't you just make all your meals over the weekend? Or why don't you just go and buy deli food? Or why don't you hire someone to drive them home from school? Like they'll just be like, you're an idiot. Why don't you do A, B, and C? And you're like, you don't get it. Like, maybe you don't have the money to do all that. Maybe you don't have the resources to do all that. Um, I've had many, many people say, you can't afford to hire me to pick, you up, pick up your kids. It's not that I didn't try either. But they'll be like, man, why don't you just do that? You're so lazy. It's like the amount of time you spend on the phone calling people and saying, I'll pay you this much an hour and they won't even listen to that this much hour. It's like, you don't know already how much I'm paying for daycare. What I want to give you is this much of a percent of what I'm already paying. And it's just like, fine. I mean, if someone offered me that money, I would definitely drive their kids from daycare home. Like, that's simple. It's not even childcare. It's just going from point A to B. So people will would often have called me lazy and they have no clue. You know, the phone company would know how many phone calls I made in order to put these systems in place. Um, so it's really, it's, it was, it's almost like some of their business. It's not that I'm going to them as counselors or something, but sometimes like, Oh, what's going on? Oh, I gotta go. Gotta get a and then this conversation, you know, draws out over weeks. And then it's basically like, Oh, you're a scum. Why are you A, B, and C? And it's just like, Besides not being encouraging and uplifting, it's not even supportive and it doesn't really seem like those people are friends. <laughs> it just seems like they got a chip on their shoulder and there's people that are and say they got an accident in a wheelchair. And it's like, until I'm, I can empathize with them, I can hang out with them, I can see what their struggles are, which is, I think is also very kind of heroic to be able to you know, it's kind of like you see some documentary where they follow this certain person around for the day and this is my head, this is this, this is this. And you're like, wow, that's intense because you're sharing what your experience is. You're sharing that if you walk down a certain street, people jump you and, and like rob you. And, you know, and it's just like, yeah, I am grateful to, to kind of, I'm a really emp empathetic person. So it's like, you know, the energy, like all those phone calls, I could have been studying. You know, all those emails and all those budgeting my checkbook, you know, back when I was getting student loans to say, I'm going to do this and I have this much money to pay somebody to help with this. And it's like, you just say, well, fine, I'm just going to 
next term I'm not even going to try it. And it's not that you're giving up. It's like I could have just done it myself. <laughs> like I could have just. And people will be saying how prideful. My cousin was saying how prideful the people like us are because we don't ask for help. Say, like, how do you know we don't ask for help? The thing is, people are like, wait, wait, she doesn't ask for help. Don't even let her talk to you. Don't answer the phone. And it's not going to offend me if you say no. But at the same time, I mean, I think it's easier. I, I think it's easier sometimes you see people with big families and husband and wife and grandparents are in town I, and neighbors are very friendly. I almost feel like people that already have help, it's like they get more help because it's already, they're not like, oh my gosh, it's so exhausting. It's like, can you help take this burden? It's like more of a, hey, let me help you. Like, I see that all the time. It's like, when I was married, my ex-husband, everything was clean cut, clothes were clean, well fed. And he was like, this is weird. Since I've been married to you, more women have been hitting on me or something. I was like, oh, what a joke. I said, I said ex. But it's like, I see that sometimes when you see someone like young adult, I mean, yeah, they're young adult. You kind of just like bachelor and kind of like hair like this. And then their spouse is kind of like, okay, haircut, okay, you need to shave now. I'm tired of that. Or, okay, you need to cut your nails. Or, I'm going to, you know, take this to the cleaners and have this shirt all nice and get rid of that. Don't wear that to work. Like, I hear people saying that, oh, my wife wouldn't want me to wear this because I wore it two days ago, all this stuff. And then there's like this different thing, and then there's also this love, and then there's also potential family meals that may be more, even though people, a lot of people are working in families, that may be a little bit more planned and more nourish, nourishing our balance. And it's like, maybe they're not going to drive that raggedy car that breaks down all the time. Maybe they're going to have like a car and they know they have to get their kids and pick them up and go on family trips. They're going to you know, you know, bump it up a notch. And so then it becomes like, maybe more it's like they're acting as a good spouse and it's like they're going to be if people don't know they're married like oh that guy will be a perfect spouse like oh wait they're already somebody else's and some people disregard that so that's what everyone else's prerogative but i always find that interesting and even thinking if you're single and if you have friends or if you have a partner whether you live together or not you have some kind of companionship. Sometimes you can give and take, give and take. Sometimes you have a spouse who will always take the garbage out, clean the bathrooms, and do dishes. And maybe somebody else would do laundry, do the grocery shopping, and prepare meals. And maybe then they'll share childcare. Could you imagine being single, having to leave, and having to do that since day one of the kids being born? Like, Having to do all of that, it's never ever been divided. It's never ever like, it's not like, oh shoot, I have an appointment for an oil change. You get the oil change, come back, get gas, and by the time you get home, the kids will be bathed and dinner will be done. Like, there's no, it's always me doing that, gotta do the circle. It's never like, cut this in half and split the responsibility. And it's really weird when you have people. That don't have kids and they have a spouse and everybody's making their dinner doing the laundry they're coming home from school and work and like, everything's all done and i was like oh my gosh do not cover your <laughs> neighbor's assistants or if you can afford to pay somebody else to come in do that or if someone actually takes you seriously and you want your kids to get a ride home once a week so that you can go to your lab class that's mandatory for your school program so that was, that's, this is the main reason that I make, sorry, I made me teary eyes. This is the main reason that I have this channel because it seems like literally once every six years, I was just trying to think back, I would see somebody in a similar state and they seem to be doing well and it's almost painful to watch it, but you know... I've seen, I had an old friend that was like this, working all the time, working seven days a week, doing this, doing that, kid, kid sharing, which was something I didn't have to deal with, because there was a lot of abuse still going on, but, ugh, it makes me sick. I almost was so overwhelmed with my own story, I couldn't listen to her story, but because, not because it was like, oh my god, that's overwhelming, but because it sounded so much like my story that 
I don't wish this on my worst enemy, you know, um, all of this difficulty that me and my kids have dealt with. And so when you heard that, you're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was like, I know exactly how you feel. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. But at the same time, you know, you can encourage everyone, like iron sharpens iron. And so it's, yeah, it's really hard to say how I really feel, get a teary eyed and feeling crummy and having these issues and just doing this like mental mantra, like, it's like, ah, I feel a tell and I quit. No, it's like that doing the mental mantra and just saying, what have I learned? What have I learned? What did I see on this, in this magazine? What did I see? They would post things at the natural health school, like the sign on the bathroom, like, you know, the little tear offs, like, just made a study. You know, people have a little tear offs of the numbers or yard work, you know, call this number. It would be, everybody needs love or something like that. And it would be like, take some, take some, you know, you want it. And I was like, nobody's watching. I was like, I need some love. Like, I'd put this stupid thing and I would do my laundry, come home or do my laundry and be like, Seriously, being alone, being the only adult in the house, and having no ability to do what other people do, normies do, and being kind of, it's almost like, if you want to keep it together, you got to do all of this work by yourself, and there's no free time, basically. Um, so it's kind of makes me laugh to think about. I've seen these more than once, I'm sure, that I put that, I, I was like, I don't care, I'm taking this. <laughs> like, put it in my pocket. And it's like, I'm sure someone will come around and take that off and be like, this is ridiculous. But I think that whoever silly person did those, they don't understand that for someone in my situation, that meant the world. Like, even if it was like 48 hours of just, there is love in the world. <laughs> like, this is a complete stranger, no one signed it. I don't, there's no phone number attached. It's just a silly little thing that you tear off that says love on it. Or maybe it has a couple, like, pieces or something. Maybe it has a couple little things. I've done it more than once I've seen it. Um, so whoever's watching, <laughs> if you're doing, if you're doing that, you may or may not get in trouble for not getting it authorized to be <laughs> stamped, to be posted on the wall. But, even if it made me laugh, even if I really carried it and, and doing laundry, looking at what's this in my pocket? It's like, everybody needs that. Like, it's just really difficult. It's very easy sometimes when people talk about children and geriatric people, older people that are children that aren't taken care of, or orphans that aren't being handled, like hugged and loved, and then adults um, being isolated and just kind of like having hip injuries perishing of pneumonia or isolating in the house, nobody visit our relatives, which unfortunately, you know, for us, we don't visit our relatives because of finances, basically, and I'm noticing more um, psychologists and counselors really having this, say, need to say adults may not be getting a lot of like the counselor and stuff there's not a lot people are expecting that this adult age of my age young adults older adults are adult enough to figure it out basically adults enough to have choices and you're not like bound in the house because you can't drive and you're not a baby where you have no choice um it's it's one of those things uh, i think of it also another analogy we had a playground where we live and we have the older kids driving or riding the bus to work and we had a meeting and they're like there's a little playground for little girls and boys to play on there's a basketball hoop which are teenagers are pushing and shoving each other playing on maybe little boys will, and girls will get a hold of it if they're not in a serious game but like what about that middle age what about you know, age 10 to say 14 something like that it's like what are they gonna do and i thought about that as teenagers like when i have teenagers like we used to go to park every day, we used to go roller skating, we used to go to the pool. Now they're just like, no, we don't want to do it. It's like, and then, it, you know, it gets to an age, they're supposed to be doing a lot of work, and they're going to be they're old enough to ride the bus or go someplace and go to work and stuff, and potentially hang out with friends, and you have that, but there's that middle age where they're kind of still, you know, trying to, trying to get gifts for them. Like, oh, you know, everyone will have this gift for two-year-olds. Oh, it's really easy to get. 
find gifts for two year olds. It's really easy to find gifts for six and seven year olds, both boys and girls or whatever. And and I think parents too, we kind of, we might I don't know, I'm talking for myself. So you think that teenagers are gonna be left alone only with your new bothering me. And then you're gone a little bit long one day, like, where have you been? I miss my mom. It's like, it's like, I just, I mean, they had one meeting where I was taking a class and I was coming home. Like, okay, okay, we gotta get stuff together. We gotta clean. They're like, Mom, we kind of had a special time alone when you were gone those Mondays. And I was just like, Oh, they didn't do me to be here, like, nagging everything. And so it's like, I guess you learn as you go along. Um, with that, I will move on. I, I want to say one thing before I push stop. I remember making a few videos that I probably didn't post, and I know going through ups and downs, I definitely don't want to be a burden on anyone. I had some issues as a kid feeling like a burden, so I might be a little touchy about that, but it's just interesting when you have something crazy happen, your friend has something crazy happen, and you like bend over back to help them, and you're not expecting it in return, but then something really crazy happens, and you like call through that whole list, and you're just like, I need like, I need like help for half an hour, and you, you know, someone to carry something down from the car or something like this, and it's just like, what is this? It's not sagebrush. What is that? The rolling tumbleweed. Tumbleweed is like crickets and. You're like, there's nobody around, nobody answers your phone. <laughs> it's like, really, you're not really friends. Like, even if somebody did that and I can't deal that I was too busy, I would at least try to say, I don't know what that noise I would at least try to say, I'm sorry, I'm busy, but I may be able to help you in the future. Please call back or something. Like, <laughs> or like, let's talk when I'm not so busy, but. I want to know that I got your message. Like the least have it, decency to say I got your message and totally blow it off. And so it's like maybe it's me, maybe it's my fault. And that's another reason when I watch YouTube videos, those people are not my friends. I don't know those people. They could be like thieves, wrong. I could go to their house and they were like really great internet people, and they can I go to their house, they could pickpocket me for all I know. I don't know, but it's very, but it's very interesting um, for me thinking about. Even in my parents' generation, having been in the same towns, even if they're an hour away, spending a lot of time with relatives and people in the neighborhood and people in the church, having this like support network, having this phone tree network, they can call, oh, let's call this person, let's call Auntie, or mom has to go or something, mom's sick, someone else is going to take care of me for a week. Just knowing that now we're all like separating, we're all going to college far away, we're doing this, we're doing that, we're doing this, you know. And, you know, a few years ago, farm families, people were drafting the military, different things that's spreading out families. And I often see around me people kind of bring each other in and bring together an adoptive family. Um, and for some reason, we haven't been too good at that. So it's like, oh, maybe it's my fault. So sometimes it's like sharing with people that you can do what you got to do. And sometimes things don't work in your timing, and you just got to be patient. And just thinking that some people could be really, say they had a hard time doing yard work, they could have, watch a couple of YouTube videos, watch somebody have step by step. So it's the same, you can watch something. This is not television, this is not a movie at the movie theater. This is not talking to your mom on the phone, this is like, complete stranger, they might have something that you, that they say that could be, right, like, resting my back from that, that could be um, valuable and kind of, like, turn your frown upside down and help you get on with your day. And it's not like it's a medicine or <laughs> you have to be addicted to this, but it can it can be a sense of community. And, I, I mean, it's kind of sad. <laughs> I mean, like, they say sometimes, the more friends you have on the Internet, the more lonely you are, like, people... I had all these friends on Facebook and this and that, and they had that little story about the young adult and she got in a car accident and in the hospital nobody came. And it's like, those are like virtual friends. And yeah, 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 they're always on there and boosting each other, this and that, this and that, commenting, this and that, liking, posting pictures. And then all of a sudden, same thing. When you need someone out here to hold your hand 
or call or send flowers, even if they're at work all day, it's like nobody. And they, they do those little studies about what's going on at the same time. And inevitably, people are having the only way their business is succeeding is if they're going out on these social medias and doing these type of things. It's really interesting that you kind of feel obligated to participate. You don't have to participate. And I've learned in my own, like, even when I used to go to the weight loss groups, which I would like to go to, it's a social event. There's a lot of older people there. A lot of younger people are busy in school. They do this. They work in the grave, graveyard shift. They crazy schedules. But there is still people keeping me alive in person, sit in circle, and have talks and clap your hands when someone does something. There's also other groups and clubs. A lot of stuff you may know better than me um, just because people have interest um, and even, even going out to restaurants and stuff is a social event. Even if you're by yourself, it's like getting out of your own four walls. And I see people in there, um, older folks, when we meet with a kid's teacher up the street here in a public place, I see it and I'm like, that might be me <laughs> when I'm their age. And I might not, I might be on a tight, tight budget and I might get the cheapest thing on the menu or a salad or just a cup of water and just sit there and watch people come in and out. And that's almost one of my worst <laughs> nightmares, but I thought, you know, the way it is right now, that's what it's looking like. But I said, at least you have that. Like, that kind of sucks saying that, but it's not complete isolation. People, I knew that was the highlight of their day. They would do that, like, three times a week, meet their friends there, come by themselves. They'd be regulars. You know, people wave at them, greet them, tell them how their dog's doing, you know, this and that. I I've seen that, and you see that in the old movies all the time, but... It's just, what I'm saying is, there's a lot of people that are in one end of the extreme and other people on the other end of the extreme and people in the middle, and things shift. People change cities, people stay in the city they grew up in, different things happen, like divorce that kind of like the normal places aren't so cool to go to anymore. Anyways, it's a little bit longer than I wanted to be. I'm going to go ahead and post this one. Um, I would like to just do that as kind of expression of thanks to other people who post things. Um, I'm sorry that I'm so uncomfortable today. Um, I, it's just a reality of what's going on and I'm, I kind of feel like I shy away because this, this is like, it just seems like not the happiest. It's not the happiest time to deal with, but it's it is what it is, and like I said, the big reason for doing this is to share the experience, how I'm not getting through it, and then letting other people decide they did with me by posting. It's like, you know, you're not alone, really, um, that there's somebody else that may be going through it, or they, they may have nothing to do with what you're going through, but it gives you a different perspective on life, and you know, people are blind and can't walk, this and that, this and that. Sometimes we see them and we're like, well, my problems are nothing compared to those. And you're not really not having to compare it, but I just want to show that out there. So God bless. I was like, can you tell, have this blind down and have this one curtain? I would like to make it one day so you could see one of my own. It's kind of boring. All I see is the neighbor's house. But if I could actually see, it's almost like, a big wall here. It's a, I don't know. I get really claustrophobic. I kind of. I, I don't want to think about it. I'm gonna close the. I'm gonna close the blinds. But God bless.